Forget gurus. Forget anyone claiming to be an online business expert without going through the challenges of entrepreneurship themselves. The Real Money, Real Business podcast is here to prove the best insights in online business comes from your fellow online business builders. We dig into stories of entrepreneurs selling their business on the Empire Flippers marketplace so that you can learn how they made their business profitable, how they overcame obstacles, and what lessons they learned in their online journey. If you want to take your business and your knowledge to the next level, you've come to the right podcast. Let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to the Real Money, Real Business podcast. I'm Lauren and today we have Ali on the show who's selling an Amazon FBA business on the Empire Flippers Marketplace. Hey Ali, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm great, thanks. How are you? Fantastic. Yeah, I'm doing very well, thanks. Really excited to have you on the show. I'm sure we're going to learn a lot from you. But before we get started, I'm going to give the listeners a brief overview of the business so that they know a bit more of what we're talking about. As I mentioned, this is an Amazon FBA business. It was created in April 2010, and it's in the apparel and accessories niche. The average revenue for the business is $650,352 per month, and it makes an average of $97,161 per month in net profit. The assets included with the business are an Amazon Seller Central account with 418 unique products, a domain including all site content and files, an additional domain, supplier contracts and relationships, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, and Snapchat social media accounts, trademarks, and an email list with 113,000 subscribers. For everyone listening, you can visit empireflippers.com forward slash marketplace and search for listing number 65976 to learn more about this business. Or you can unlock this listing to start your due diligence if you're interested in purchasing this asset. So now that we have a breakdown of the business, let's hear from the seller. Ali, can you fill us in on your background in starting and running online businesses? Yeah, basically, we started a while ago now. I think we started on eBay in 2007-ish. It wasn't full-time at that time. We just started selling something which we thought we could sell easily and not take up too much space. So we started selling men's ties, silk ties. And then from there, we did quite well on eBay. We added in men's shirts and cufflinks. But then from around, we kept going at that until around 2010 when we went full time. And then from there, we've just grown and grown. Since that time, we've formal wear from men's basically, since that time has dropped off quite a lot. And we've moved more over to casual clothing. And I think we started on Amazon, I think roughly around when we went full time, around 2010, maybe a bit after, because until then, eBay was actually the biggest marketplace for us. And that's it really. We did have our own website as well, which we started after selling on eBay for a few years. But Amazon really took off, I think, starting from about 2012, Amazon really took off for us. So we just focused on that. Yeah. So when you were looking to transition off of eBay, I'm sure you shopped around at the various e-commerce platforms. What made Amazon stand out for you and made you decide to really focus on that? Well, at that time, I think Amazon reached out to start selling on there because Amazon was only really known for selling books at that time. Because we were quite a big seller on eBay for men's clothing, they reached out to us to move some of our listings onto Amazon and see how it goes. And at that time, there wasn't Amazon FBA. It was just basically all seller fulfilled. So we started off with Seller Fulfilled. But after about a year, at the start, we didn't really take Amazon too serious because I was just a bookseller. So our listings aren't going to be good on there. But after about a year, our sales almost overtook our eBay. So we were quite surprised at how many sales we were getting on there. And from that point, we just grew and grew, even grew to the point where we started off Seller Fulfilled. Because the sales grew so fast, we couldn't keep up with the picking and packing. And so after a few years, we thought that's when we found out about the FBA program and we wanted to join just because we were too busy to pick and pack everything ourselves. And then it just kept growing from there, really. Yeah, that must have been a a very exciting time. You mentioned that you had a website at one stage that you were selling through. Have you branched off of Amazon or have you focused your attention solely on that platform? Well, our website was doing okay, but when COVID started, it was difficult to manage the website because we had to open it and go there. So we thought we'd shut it down and just go totally outsource model. So we starting at 3PL and sending to FBA and then selling on Amazon only. So we haven't really gone back to our website. So we've just left it for now. But maybe something for the future, I think. 
Yeah, absolutely. It makes sense that when COVID happened, you sort of streamlined the business and then focused on Amazon. I think that was probably a smart move. So you started this business in 2010. So it's been 12 or 13 years now. What are the reasons you've decided to sell the business after all this time? The main reason is because we want to pursue other things. So we want to travel and go abroad. We're thinking about leaving the UK as well and living abroad somewhere. Partly to the weather, because we want to move somewhere a bit warmer. And also because we're doing this for so long, it's kind of, we want to get out there basically and see what else is really out there. That's the main reason. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. It's been over a decade, so I'm sure you're dying to try something new. Yeah. Because it's been 10 years, it's been a while. Our minds really just stuck in in Amazon and retail. So we just want to really get up from there and just see what else is happening. Yeah, absolutely. And there are so many other potential opportunities out there, especially with online business. So I'm sure you'll find something new to capture your attention. You've had a long journey with this business, longer than a lot of e-commerce sellers. Looking back over your time, what would you say was your biggest success or win that stands out in your memory? I think our biggest success was actually designing to sell on Amazon. And part of that, I think the best move we did was actually to sell on Amazon FBA. And looking back, because we didn't really know about selling through third-party warehouses as well for storage and then selling to Amazon. So at the start, we were really struggling for storage as well. So I think looking back as well, we should have moved over to 3PL and to FBA sooner to grow faster. Yeah, switching to Amazon, I think definitely changed the trajectory of your business. I think if you stayed on eBay, you wouldn't have been a fraction of the size that you are now. Not everything was smooth sailing, I'm sure, especially given the long history of the business. What would you say was your biggest setback or challenge that you had to overcome? I think our most biggest recent setback, I think, it would have been when Brexit went through. From the vote in 2016 to actually Brexit happening in 2020. Before then, it was easy to sell in the UK and throughout Europe because you just get the stock to UK and then you could sell in the whole of Europe, no problem. While Brexit was happening, because the government was indecisive as well, we didn't really know what to plan. So just smoothing out the stock inventory for both, kind of balancing it right, so your sales in UK are good and, and Europe, that's been, I think, the most difficult part. Yeah, I'm sure. It definitely caused a lot of uncertainty in the market as well, which I'm sure you felt the repercussions of. Yeah, and also at that time, then on top of that, the pandemic started. I think that's really been that. Bad. But I think from the last three, four months, it's starting to get back to normal, to be honest. Kind of like smooth it out. Yeah, that's good to hear. It's taken a long time to recover from all of that, but it's good to hear that things are smoothing out now. When it comes to driving traffic to your products and getting your products in front of consumers, are you using PPC or listing description SEO to achieve that? At the moment, we only use Amazon advertising, but I think most of our sales have just grown as in people know our items and they're pretty decent so apart from the amazon advertising we don't do any other advertising we did used to do social media marketing when we had our own website and to be honest that was working pretty well because we we're at a level where the social media advertising was breaking even so we were just building our customers up from there and we grew our email list i think about around a hundred thousand which was quite good but then when the pandemic started we just found it difficult to keep it running so we shut it down so at the moment, the only advertising is Amazon. Advertising. Yeah, I'm sure your established brand identity that you've built up over these years works in your favor as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, Ali, what do you see as the major opportunities for growth that a buyer can tap into when they take over this business? Well, at the moment, the biggest, I think, growth opportunity would be to focus on the USA marketplace because we've tried our best item on there and it sold really well. I think moving over to Amazon USA would be a big marketplace, I think. And I think even looking backwards, when we started the UK and Europe marketplace, I think we should have started at the same time the US. But I think we didn't have enough capital to do that. But looking back, if we had done, I think we would have grown a lot faster. Yeah, absolutely. It's a huge market to tap into. So definitely a lot of growth potential there. You mentioned you've tried selling a product there. Are you still selling that product in the US? Yeah, basically we're still starting. But we had one item and it sold really well. But we haven't managed to keep it in stock all the time. So we sold quite well from, I think, summer 22. But the stock had run out basically by winter 22. And then we've just got it replaced now. But the feedback's really good and the reviews are good. So it's growing quite well. And the sales are good as well. Yeah, well, that's a promising sign. So definitely good things to look forward to there. Let's take a dive into your supply chain. Can you walk me through what your supply chain looks like? How many suppliers do you have and where are they based? And then how does inventory get to Amazon? So all our products are manufactured, over 90% are manufactured in Bangladesh. And we only source an agent in Bangladesh, which is one sourcing office. And they go contact the manufacturers. I think at this time, they've got around five manufacturers that they work with manufacturing for them. 
So they do all the quality control in Bangladesh. And then once it's ready, they ship out to us, normally by sea. And then once it reaches UK or Europe, it's stored in third-party warehouses. And then from there, when Amazon needs stock replenishing, we replenish it from there. And then all our stock at the moment is sold through Amazon, FBA. And then we look forward and then reorder again so it can be replenished in time. That's basically the supply chain. It's quite streamlined because we did use our own warehouses, but it wasn't as um, efficient. Yeah, I mean, for a business of this size, it certainly is very streamlined. How long does it normally take to replenish inventory from the day you place the order to the day it arrives at Amazon? Normally from a confirmed order with the sourcing agent, they normally take around 120 days to get to us. But over, it's coming back down now to 120. I think over the COVID time, it's been a bit longer because of the logistic problems. I think getting up to 150 days, but come back down to 120. So it's getting back to normal, I think. Yeah, it's great to hear that number's coming down. And do you know what your current inventory limits are at Amazon warehouses? Because we sell clothing, they have a separate clothing unit. So in the UK, it's 150,000 units of clothing. In the EU, the limit's 280,000. And that covers all the European countries, basically. And then for the US, 6,500. Okay, perfect. And have you experienced any restrictions with that? Is that enough space for you to be able to hold your inventory? Yeah, UK and Europe is plenty. Well, US is okay as well because we're just starting off with the one item. And I think as we will grow, it'll, get, it'll increase. It's plenty of space for us. Yeah, fantastic. So do you have a team in place that helps you to run this business or are you doing it all solo? We did have a team, but at the moment, it's only me and my brother running it. And we basically share the responsibility. So my brother basically does all the logistics and all the warehousing and stuff and the replenishing. And I concentrate mainly on the product development and the daily tasks on Amazon. Perfect. Okay. So if we look at, at your role in the business, how many hours per week you're spending on the business? We spend around 12 hours each. So I do 12 and my brother, about 12. Perfect. Okay. I mean, for a business that size, that's pretty passive. Yeah. I think because we've got our products all basically done and we're just spinning them, it's a lot easier now than before. Whereas before we had another tool in management and the team when we were doing our own warehousing. But since we've just had to streamline our best products and just concentrate on them. So I think since then, our workforce is used quite a lot. Yeah, I'm sure. So with all of that in mind, what do you think the biggest challenge will be for a buyer taking over the business? The biggest challenge is still, I think, just having enough stock in the warehouse at the right time, especially because as you move from summer to winter and then back again, I think that's the biggest challenge that we still haven't managed to smooth out 100% because we don't always have all our SKUs in stock all the time which ideally we should have our best sellers all the time in stock. So I think that's the main challenge. Yeah, I think that's definitely a common challenge for all e-commerce businesses is managing that supply chain and inventory levels. What sort of support are you willing to offer the buyer to help them navigate these challenges and to impart all the experience you've gained over these years? So we're willing to give 90 days. So we can help by email or by phone, it's fine. And then after that, we're also willing to help after that, but we can negotiate on a payment, whatever structure. Even if they wanted a permanent role, we're happy to do something if they wanted. Yeah, that's great. I think that support will come in in really handy and 90 days is very generous. That's wonderful. When it comes time to actually digging into the nitty gritty of the sale, would you be open to something like an earn out agreement? We are happy to do something. So we're happy to do like a cash payment up front and then a percentage paid over 12 or 18 months. But we don't really want to link any earn out to any revenues because we want to move on basically and not have that hanging over us, if you get what I mean. So we just want to really keep it simple. Yeah, absolutely. That makes a lot of sense. And would you commit to a non-compete agreement? Yeah, definitely. We have to agree to that because we want to move on from this business. So it's not really a problem. I mean, even a two-year or three-year non-compete isn't a problem. Great. Yeah. So Ali, I mean, you've been in this business for over a decade. I'm sure you've gained a lot of experience and knowledge. For any of our listeners who are thinking of getting into the Amazon FBA game, what advice would you give to them that you wish you knew when you first started this business? I think the main advice I'd give for an FBA business is, is it all really comes down to your product. So your product has to be good. It has to be good quality and it has to be consistent. And the best way I think you can grow with Amazon as well is have a good product, good quality, and have it in stock all the time. And I think if you can do that, you can really take off. And the other thing I would definitely advise is that starting the USA marketplace early as possible, because that's really, which it can really help. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think that's fantastic advice. Consistency is definitely key in terms of product quality as well as stock. That leads us to the final question of the interview, the one we've been building up to the whole time. So if you had to put yourself into the shoes of a buyer, why do you think your business is a business worth buying? I think our business is good because our product supply chain is good because we have good partners in Bangladesh. And the product is good to add to the USA market, which will be pretty simple to do, especially for a US buyer. And I think that could grow the revenues. It could double the revenues, I think, by adding the US market. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a huge thing for buyers to tap into over and above the established business that they'd be inheriting as well. Yeah, and I think because for the UK and the Europe side, it's quite an established brand. So that's I think that's a good selling point as well when you enter the US market. Yeah, absolutely. It certainly gives you a strong foundation to build from. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with our listeners that I might have missed? No, I think that's everything. Perfect. Well, thank you, Ali, for coming onto the show and sharing some insight into yourself and this business. It certainly sounds like it's going to be a great asset for a lucky buyer. So it's been a pleasure having you on the show and I appreciate you taking the time out of your day. That's fine. Thanks a lot. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. To learn more and see if this listing has already been sold, head over to empireflippers.com forward slash marketplace and search for listing number 65976. If you're watching this on YouTube, click the link in the description to go straight to the listing. Once you've unlocked this listing, you'll be given everything you need to know about this business. So until next time, enjoy your digital journey.